When I first came across patent number 512340, where Tesla describes his bifilar coil, I got really excited. I felt something was special about this coil. But the patent is really short, it's only one and a half pages, and he does make some interesting statements, but he doesn't show the purpose of the coil, what he normally does do in his other patents. The, the patent is called Coil for Electromagnets, but obviously there's more to it. Maybe it's even censored, I don't know. The patent application is filed July 7th, 1893, and this is in the era of time that Nikola Tesla was investigating into impulse electricity. This for me is a good clue that the coil itself is patented because it is part of his impulse electricity devices, which are related to radiant energy. In this video I will make use of a VR headset to make the fields uh, more clear and the images might be a little bit shaky, but the information this way is so much better than any drawing can do. I will show the dielectric field of the bifilar coil, the magnetic field of the bifilar coil, but first let's start off with some quotes from the patent. Enjoy. And here is the patent. Its date is January 9th, 1894, right in the middle of the period where he was investigating the impulse electricity. Let me make some quotes from the patent. My present invention has for its object to avoid the employment of condensers and to so construct the coils themselves as to accomplish the same ultimate object. What he does state is that the coil is acting as a capacitor. I would here state that by the term coils I desire to include generally helices, solenoids or in fact any conductor, the different parts of which are brought into such relations with each other as to materially increase the self-induction. Uh, I'm using pancake coils and they are displayed on the patent, but he says you can use any form of coil like a cone coil. I have found that in every coil there exists a certain relationship between self-induction and capacity that permits a current of given frequency and potential to pass through it with no other opposition than that of ohmic resistance. Now he is talking about series resonance. With series resonance the impedance is cancelled out and only the wire resistance of the coil is left. In order to attain my object and to properly increase the capacity, I wind it in such a way as to secure a greater difference of potential, which means voltage, between its adjacent turns. And since the energy stored in the coil, considering the latter as a condenser, is appropriate to the square of the voltage difference, it is evident that I may in this way secure a greatly increased capacity for a given increase in potential difference between the turns. What he says here is very important. He winds the coil in such a manner that there is an increased voltage difference. And the energy stored in a capacitor, because now he, he looks at the coil as a capacitor, the formula is a half times the capacitance times the voltage squared. And he raises the voltage, but the voltage in the formula is squared, so the energy is a lot higher. And therefore the capacity of the coil is much, much, much increased by the increased voltage difference between the windings. I hope you still can follow me. I will explain it into more detail later in the video. Let's take a look at figure two. Conductor B, be wound parallel with conductor A. So A and B are the windings. And the end of A be connected with the starting point of B. 
capacity secured in this particular way possesses an additional advantage in that it is evenly distributed. What he means here is that uh, the voltage difference between the windings is equal all over the coil, just like a capacitor. That's enough quotes. It's not a lot of paper, so you can look it up for yourself. Let's proceed. This is a single layer pancake coil. And we'll start off with this to get a clear understanding of the fields of the bifiler coil. So this is not a bifiler coil, this is a single layer pancake coil. If we put a voltage difference over the coil, then it will make a magnetic field. And this magnetic field is a ether field, as all uh, electric fields are ether fields. And it looks basically like this. So this is the magnetic field of the single layer pancake coil. It's very important for me to clarify that the blue lines that I've drawn to show the magnetic ether field, the vortex, in reality these lines are closed looped. Steinmetz was very clear about this. In reality, we have never seen the magnetic ether field. We only have seen the effects of it. Like Faraday used uh, iron filings to show the magnetic field lines. And now we have progressed uh, to the ferro cell that shows the magnetic field as a vortex. I've chosen to only draw the uh, basic field lines that show the vortex of the ether. But in reality, it's much more complex than that. Let's add another coil. Another coil that is a pancake. And we'll place it next to the pancake that we already have. And make it series connected. What this does is create the same vortex in that second coil. And these two coils, they simply amplify the vortex that is already there because they have the same rotation. It looks like this. This is a bifiler pancake coil. We got the blue winding, we got the red winding, and they are series connected. What happens here in between those coils is what we call mutual inductance. And what this translates to is that the magnetic field of the right coil is coupled to the magnetic field of the left coil. Now let's remove the magnetic field vortices and look at the voltage. What is happening here with the voltage? Here we have the bifiler pancake coil, but still without the series connection. The way they are connected is that the inside of one coil, this time the red coil, is series connected to the outside of the blue coil. What this does is create a double rotation of the electric energy through the windings that is in the same rotational direction. If we enter in from the red on the outside, the energy spirals inwards, counterclockwise from this point seen, series connects to the blue, and again, counterclockwise spirals inwards to the end of the bifilar coil. And this way, the magnetic fields of these coils are assisting because they are both spiraling in the same direction. One more time, to make it really clear. What Tesla did is hook it up in series from the start of one side, let's take the blue, to the red of the other side. And why did he do this? I will simply explain to you. We've got the red. The voltage comes in, let's say 100 volts. 100 volts come in, counterclockwise. 
Now it's in the center of the coil, in the middle of the winding. So uh, the 100 volts must have dropped to 50 volts now. And now the 50 volts drops down to zero volts. Note that the rotation is the same, counterclockwise. And the second rotation is also counterclockwise. And this means that the magnetic field produced by both windings is in the same direction, so they assist. We have mutual inductance. So, 100 volts here, 50 volts there, and 0 volts there. This means that between the windings, at this point, here's 100, there's 50, there's half of the supplied voltage. Same here. 0 volts here, 50 volts there, so there is a 50 volts difference between the windings here. Everywhere is a voltage difference of half of the supplied voltage. To understand why this half of the supplied voltage is important to be sitting between those windings, we have to take a look at a capacitor. I've drawn a capacitor here. This, these are the plates of the capacitor and as we know there is a half of the supplied voltage over it. So here is zero volts, here is a half of the voltage supplied. What this does in the capacitor is set up a dielectric field. The energy stored in the dielectric field, there is a, a formula for that, E the energy stored in the capacitor is equal to a half times the capacitance of the capacitor times the voltage over the plates squared. This translates to the bifiler coil as the windings because now we are not looking at the magnetic field but we are looking at the dielectric field and these windings, these two windings that are next to each other, are really close by. In my case I use speaker wire and uh, they've got a PVC coating and that acts as a dielectric and the windings are really close together. There's a half of the supplied voltage in between them, so these windings act as the plates of a capacitor. Just like a capacitor has a dielectric field between the plates of the capacitor, the coil has a dielectric field between the windings of the coil. This is a capacitor, but this is also a capacitor. Let's measure how much capacitance is in this capacitor. I'm testing the capacitance and it says 697 picofarads. A coil indeed it is, of course. Here I have drawn the dielectric field lines as blue lines in between the windings. So the dielectric field is concentrated between the two windings because there is a voltage difference of half of the supplied voltage between the windings. If I put 100 volts over the coil, then there is a 50 volts difference all over the coil. And this sets up a dielectric field. In reality, the field is concentrated between the windings, but it will also emanate outside of the coil as dielectric lines of force are also connected to conductors outside of the coil. But I want to concentrate on this field here. The formula for the energy stored in the dielectric field is a half of the capacitance of the coil times the voltage squared. And this is really nice. Because if we change the voltage Let's say from 100 volts to 200 volts. It is not a linear buildup of energy because the voltage difference is squared. So 100 squared or 200 squared is a lot more energy. 
And this is really nice because a small increase in voltage will make a large increase in the energy stored in its dielectric field. How do we change the voltage? How do we charge up that dielectric field with a lot of energy? So it's strong and we can play with it. One of the methods of really making the dielectric field strong is making the bifiler coil series resonant. And that will be explained in the next video. Donations are always much appreciated because this work is all open source, meaning that I will share all the information that I gain with the community that is interested, and that is you. You can fund this open source research by giving a donation on my PayPal account that is listed below in the description of the video. If you have questions, you can do so in the comment section below. Please subscribe, like, and share this video and turn on notifications if you want to get a personal call when my next video is out. Thank you for watching. See you next time.